Um, so my name is Lauren Bedell, and I am a interaction designer coming from San Francisco. And I currently work at a design and innovation firm called Matter. And today I'm going to be talking about embodiment or designing for the human body in XR. And just a quick poll, how many of you guys are designers or developers actively working within the field? Raise of hands. All right, awesome. Glad to see you guys all in the room. So I'm sure you all understand that we are currently seeing this shift from this era of mobile computing into an era of spatial computing. And with mobile computing, we're given kind of this extreme portability, yet we're confined to a certain amount of real estate on our screens. And as a result, our body-based interactions are reduced down to the ability for our fingertip to glide and tap across a piece of glass. So our screens are always in our pocket, they're always in, within reach, um, and they've become our window into the digital world. But with spatial computing, this is all changing. With spatial computing, we see the space around us um, as now our playground and our medium to interact with the digital world. And on one hand, we're seeing these technological advancements such as artificial intelligence and machine learning, advancements in rendering and displays. And on the other hand, from an interaction design perspective, we're seeing emerging kind of post-mobile behaviors such as um, voice and gesture um, kind of now become our toolbox and we're merging the physical and digital. So the world is now becoming our interface. So I'm curious, how does this change our work as designers? Um, I think first and foremost, spatial computing now means that the digital experience is now an embodied experience. So we're going from something more like this to more like this. And I think it's no longer about um, the way that our fingertip interacts with a piece of glass, but it's more about the human body in 3D space. And more specifically, it's about the human body in 3D space over time. And let's for a minute just kind of look at different other existing fields of study which concern body, space, and time. And we see things such as industrial design, architecture, sculpture, dance, set design, cinematography. And if we begin to classify these into body, space, and time, what we get is something very interesting. Um, we get in the middle here, you know, you see this marriage of body, space, and time with interaction design for XR, along with the fields of dance and choreography. And this is something particularly interesting to me because in addition to being an interaction designer, I'm also a dancer and choreographer. So I feel as designers, as we enter this new medium, that there is a wealth of knowledge within the field of dance um, and choreography to inform our design practice. So I'm curious, as we now kind of need a new breed of designer to navigate the three-dimensional world, how can we leverage um, theories and concepts from the field of dance to inform interaction design for XR. So today I want to introduce um, the designers in the room just to some key concepts and terminology um, just to give some exposure as well as to kind of start a conversation as to how we can bring these practices into our work. So I want to categorize things by um, four different areas, body, space, shape, and effort. And these four categories are actually part of an existing framework called Laban Movement Analysis, which was created by a gentleman named Rudolf Laban in the early 1900s. And what he did was he created a framework to document, um, analyze, and describe movement, not only for the field of dance, but he also brought it into education, he brought it into business, um, and interestingly enough, he also took it into factories and assembly lines and looked at how people were um, physically doing a task and would offer kind of recommendations and guidance as to how to appropriately move their body and space in order for the most natural and efficient um, interaction. 
So when we talk about body and space, what we're really looking at is how is the body organized in relation to the environment? And kind of one key concept relating to the body I want to talk about is this idea of kinesphere. So it's this idea of knowing kind of the space around you that you can reach out and, and occupy without changing your feet in space. Um, and I think an interesting example of this is um, tilt brush. So this is a, tilt brush was kind of a memorable experience for me because it was the first time that you saw people actually out there and exploring the space around them and, off, and actually getting this rich visual feedback of how they were infecting the environment. Um, and you can see here with the tilt brush example that um, the feedback is occurring, the action and the feedback is occurring within the kinesphere. And to kind of counter that, we also see interactions such as on the right-hand side where the action and the feedback are divorced from the kinesphere. So the feedback is occurring outside the kinesphere, yet we're manipulating it and doing a gesture from inside the kinesphere. So it's interesting to think about kind of these zones of interaction and how we can bring content um, closer to the kinesphere and what are the implications of that versus um, putting objects farther away from the kinesphere, um, what is kind of the implication of, of farther objects. Another concept I want to talk about is something called developmental movement patterning, which is kind of this evolutionary and neuromuscular framework for organizing the body. So a lot of us talk about um, how do we bring natural interactions into XR, how do we how do we create something that everyone kind of understands? And if we go back to basics, this is a framework that looks at, from an evolutionary perspective, how you begin to learn certain types of movement. So things such as um, head-tail is looking at spinal movement. Things such as core distal is looking at how you radiate out from a center. Um, looking at cross-lateral, think of kind of how you're walking in space. You normally step with your right foot and put your left hand out. Um, so things like that are, we've grown to kind of learn over time. So I'm interested to know how we can start to use kind of those neuromuscular frameworks to begin to design spatial interactions. Another framework I wanna talk about is this um, idea of Laban notation, which was created by Rudolf Laban and it was a framework designed to document human movement over time and space. So what we have here is a series of symbols um, coordinating to different parts of the body, but also different directions in space as well as levels in space. So we have this kind of rich lexicon of symbols which then are put together, um, similar to sheet music you can see on the right, um, Laban created this system to kind of systematically understand and document movement over time. So as an interaction designer, I'm wondering as the complexity of body-based interactions increase over time, what is, our, what is our framework and how do we describe and um, communicate that to other designers or other developers? Um, the other two categories I want to talk about are shape and effort. So when we're looking at shape and effort, what we're, what we're looking at is how the body moves and forms in the relationship to the environment, and then looking at effort, what are those dynamic qualities um, of how you move through the environment. So Laban has uh, also created a vocabulary of both shape qualities and effort qualities. So shape qualities you can see on the left, things such as sinking, advancing, retreating, spreading, enclosing, and then effort qualities on the right, um, the right column. So those are indirect, direct, free, bound, light, strong, sustained, and sudden. And interestingly enough, um, from the development standpoint, there are a number of studies that have actually begun to kind of quantify these effort qualities on the right-hand column and utilize those together with machine learning to um, bring some very accurate, 
qualitative gesture recognition to the table, both with um, a single accelerometer as well as full body tracking. So if we look at shape, these shape and effort qualities, um, some examples that we get here are looking at shape qualities, you're looking at more an, of an advancing interaction where you're moving forward in space. So an example of that is shaking hands with someone in rec room to friend them. Um, and then on the right, looking at a spreading motion, which is a single gesture with a start and end coming from the midline um, that's spreading out. And then also with shape qualities, you can see things like a sinking motion. So you see um, it's n not necessarily a start and end, but it's a, it's a little more indirect, but you can see that um, this is kind of collapsing down to the ground. And with effort qualities, um, here are some examples of free and light. So this is a game called Luna, and um, I think they did a really great job with these very kind of delicate interactions. So you can see the controller is manifested as more of this precision grip versus a grasp of a controller. So it's something a little bit more um, light and free. Um, and they've, they've done this kind of free exploration on the right with um, kind of picking up this node and being able to move it around in space. So Laban also took these effort um, qualities and combined them in a way to make effort actions. So we see those are things like flick, slash, dab, press, ring, and glide. Um, and he kind of outlined those on, this, uh, on the kinesphere to kind of understand how the body was moving through space. And something interesting from a dance and design perspective with this is looking at um, this column on the left, you can see how those words, slash, punch, um, glide, float, kind of remind me of um, the 2D touch mechanics that you would get on a phone. So things like tap, click, press, flick, drag. Um, but I'm wondering how we can start to use these actions and vocabulary that imply three-dimensional interaction and kind of add them to our lexicon as designers. So we have things such as punch, grab, grisp, uh, grip, point, tilt. Um, so from all of these four categories, we kind of have this rich lexicon um, of knowledge here that can be applied to the interaction design practice. So I'm curious to see how, as the complexity of interactions increase, how we can begin to take these words and kind of codify certain concepts and create a framework around spatial interactions. So in summary, um, spatial computing is this near, new territory for designers. And I urge us to not simply just place 2D UI in 3D space. There can and could be a time for that, but I think designers need to understand, first and foremost, the, the body itself as an input mechanism, um, and then begin to explore the possibilities from there. Thank you.